the whole life is changed step by step. So that's what we do in counseling. And first we counsel ourselves to take care of our different problems in our whole life. Okay, first we need to understand some bad counseling skills and concepts. One, make the counselee feel uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Some people counsel by saying, oh, you, 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 you know, you're so bad, you're so sinful, you have done so many bad things, uh, you, you must repent now. Now, we can guide people to repent, but we don't force them to repent. So some people, when they do counseling, they just yell at people, and sometimes they will say, you know, you are under bondage. You, there's no hope. It's too bad. Your life is terrible. And uh, so many people told me that they've been counseled by other people, but the counseling has a lot of accusation. Accusation is not good counseling because when you accuse someone, that doesn't guide the person to change. When we want to guide the person to change, then we want to accept the person and accept their feelings and accept their hearts and to guide them step by step to change the way of thinking about themselves, about God, and about the people who hurt him, about the past experiences, and to change uh, the thinking about the whole life, how I can treasure my life. So counseling, uh, we want to help the person to feel comfortable, feel loved, so that he will have motivation to change. Okay, number two, bad counseling skill is despise the counselee and his feelings. So it's, you know, <clears throat> just despise the person. You, you cannot change, you're no good, and uh, you shouldn't feel like that. It's no use to feel like that. You, uh, it's no use to feel angry. So it's just telling the person to change, but the person is just not ready. So we have to trace the reason of the anger and guide the person to understand God's love, to experience God's love, and the good things that happen to him is because of God's love and people's love. So guide him to understand that his life is precious and it's not necessary to have anger and frustration instead of just telling him, do not be angry. Number three, <coughs> Bad counseling skill is compare oneself with the counselor and say, well, I can do it. In, in your situation, I can manage it. But the person says, I, I cannot manage it. So we cannot compare ourselves. <clears throat> Number four, being emotionally affected by, by the counselee. <clears throat> that the person might get very frustrated. You, oh, you don't listen to me. You never change. Oh, or, that. or when we hear that he's done something bad, then we get very frustrated. So we need to learn to say, okay, if we have done something very bad, it is a problem. And we want to uh, accept the person and guide the person to change instead of being angry with him. Number five, bad counseling skill is that he only cares and does not guide the counselee. He does not guide him to change. He just cares. You know, some people just say, oh, oh you feel hurt. Oh, I'm sorry for you. Oh, uh, just God cares about you, God loves you, and it's just comfort, but no guidance to change. Counseling is, has a direction to change. Six, uh, bad counseling skill is only teaching and does not respond to the feelings of the counselee. It's just telling him what to change, what to do, you know, why is it necessary to uh, just tell him what to do. That way, is the person just feel pressure that might not feel may not have the, the strength to change. And also he feel uh, rejected. Number seven, counselor uh, crosses the counselor, the counselor crosses the counselor boundary. What, what it means is that the counselor, you know, like uh, build up an unhealthy uh, reliance relationship with the person because Usually, a person hurt in experiences, he has a lot of hurts. He looks for some, someone to care about him. Now, so if this counselor see that and, and just like this person, he likes this person, uh, and then 
he just used this counseling as an opportunity to build up an unhealthy relationship with the person. That is bad counseling because then it's leading the counselee and himself into a problematic relationship. That's going to hurt both people's life. If a pastor does counseling and have unhealthy relationship with his members, then what happened is going to ruin his whole ministry. Unhealthy relationship is going to ruin our life and our ministry. Okay, and counseling principles. The counselor has to counsel himself for his whole lifetime. So we need to counsel ourselves. Our, you know, how we think about ourselves, our anger, our frustration, our lack of peace, our uh, lack of skill to relate to people, our loneliness, all this need to be counseled. To, you know, we need to counsel ourselves and then if necessary, we need to find someone to counsel us. Number two, the pr counseling principle is to respect the counselee and accept and treasure him unconditionally like God accepts us before he changes us. So accept the person and uh, do not be judgmental on the person. And that's very important that to make the person feel comfortable with us that I counsel many people and they don't feel my judgment, that, uh, that they feel accepted, then they feel comfortable to talk to me about their problems. Three, help the counselee to know that and explore his potential and resources. So we want to help the person to know his potential. He has different potentials and his resource, his resource from uh, you know, can include help from people, include financial resource, include his church, his friends, uh, his ability to work, his job, all these are his resources. So how to, how to explore his resources that he's not been using. Number four, care for the thinking, feeling, behavior, and spiritual life of the counselee. So we care for the whole person. Now some people might look like they are normal, healthy, but they might have very negative thinking, negative feelings, and behavior that is problematic, and spiritual life that is dry. So we want to care for the whole person. Okay, now we need to understand the six groups of feelings so we can respond to the person. First is, uh, so it's easy to remember the, the left side. Glad, sad, mad, afraid, ashamed, hurts. So first is the happy feelings. Second is sad feelings. Unhappy, depressed. Mad is anger. Afraid is fear. And ashamed, feeling ashamed or guilty. And then hurts. Now, feelings are an indicator that a person has problem. The initial feeling response is not necessarily wrong. It's not necessarily wrong. It's a response to tell us something is wrong. For instance, a person is yelled at by other people and they f he feel helpless. He feel hurts. This feeling is telling him he is facing a problem. This feeling is telling him he needs to do something to take care of that feeling. That's the primary feelings. If a person learns to take care of his primary feelings, then, then uh, he will not enter into secondary feelings that might be uh, more problematic. For instance, the person feels hurts when someone yells at him. And he doesn't take care of that. And this hurt feeling can build up into anger, hatred for the person, hatred for more people, despair, life is terrible, life is bad, uh, or even hate God. God is not helping me. So if he doesn't take care of his primary response, primary feelings, it's going to develop into secondary feelings that, you know, that could be a cluster of feelings that would affect him. 
So the more we handle the problems, okay, for instance, the healthy way is like this. Someone yells at us and then we feel hurt. That is telling us something is wrong. And then immediately I'll say, okay, I feel hurt because the person hurts me. And then how can we handle that? How can we handle it? Uh, by praying, by putting down the hurts, by saying it doesn't matter because the person cannot steal from me. He cannot hurt me because God loves me, God cares about me. Therefore, I can have more peace and more joy even if the person hurts me. I can let go. Then he is making use of this feeling to take care of this, uh, his experience. Now, that's the initial feelings. If a person doesn't take care of that, and then it continues to let this feeling continue to stay. Now normally, the feelings stay in a heart for a short moment. If we take care of that, then it's taken care of. It will not create more problem. But if a person for his whole lifetime, he feels hurts, and he feels angry, he feels frustrated, he feels lonely, he feels desperate, if he continue to have this feeling for his whole life, then it's unhealthy. So the initial response is telling us we need to do something. If we take care of that immediately, then the problem is solved. So feelings are an indicator saying that something needs to be fixed, something needs to be changed. And then we change it, then it will take care of the problem. So the initial feeling is not, it's not bad. It's actually helpful to us to take care of the, the inner feelings. And if we don't take care of it, the feeling will prolong, the anger will prolong, the frustration will prolong, and it will also add in other feelings. Other feeling like, oh, I would hate my spouse also because, oh, he's not helping me. I will hate the world also because the world is cruel. So it will become, it will extend and become more and more powerful and it affect the person more and more. Okay, here I talk about simple steps of counseling. First, Build up a trusting relationship with the person, listen, and guide him to express by using questions. So guide him to express. Uh, uh, now some people, you ask immediately they will talk, but some people they don't. Then we have to ask them, okay, uh, what did he do to you? What did he say exactly? You know, sometimes people would just say, well, he yelled at me and it didn't say exactly. So what, what did he say exactly? Uh, he insulted you. How did he insult you? What did he say? Okay, and then when you heard that, how do you feel? And how do you interpret that? When he said that you're useless, how do you interpret that? Do you accept that? Do you accept that and say, I'm useless? Or do you say, well, he's so bad, I'm angry with him. So what is your response? So we guide him to express by asking questions. Uh, and then second is accept and empathize. To accept the person and empathize and have empathy toward him. I accept your feeling. I understand your feeling. I know that it's not easy. I know that it's hurtful. So we empathize with the counselee. And then three, guide him to analyze the situation and problem. So guide him to say, well, what do you think the problem is? in your relationship with God, in your marriage, in your relationship with your friends, uh, in your ministry. So what do you think are the problems? Now the problem is not just a superficial consequence. Now the consequence might be he's yelling at his spouse, he's, you know, they yell at each other all the time. That is a superficial consequence. But there, could be inner problems. For instance, they cannot talk with each other. They don't care about each other. They, it's just always one-way communication. 
no response, and it caused frustration. So I asked the person, so how does your spouse talk to you? Because when I asked that, he would say, well, he always yells at me. And then I'll ask him, um, did you do anything that caused him to yell at you? So I asked him to analyze this, you know. For instance, well, I just said, he has to change. And then he yells at me. Okay, so I heard that. You want him to change. And then he yells at you. And um, do you think people can change easily? Do you think people can take advice easily? He might say, no. So you notice that you try to change him, but the consequence is he'll yell at you. So it's worse than before, right? So that's not a useful way. Uh, so the, the problem is because you want to change him, and then he's not willing to change, and therefore you have this, this uh, problem in a marriage. So there's one problem. So uh, do you think just telling him to change is the best way to build up your marriage? You might say, well, no. I understand that now uh, just telling him to change is going to uh, bring yelling. So, um, so how can we fix it? How can we change it? Now, if it's just a behavior, uh, okay, now also we should also trace the, the cause. For instance, the cause is that people have told him what to do all the time, therefore he just know only one way to tell people. So you, you um, in your thinking, it's just telling people what to change, what, what to do, Therefore, you think that that's the best way to change people. So, um, so in your mind, uh, do you always have this desire to change people? Uh, and do you find people change? Do you find people in this world change? Do they change? Or they just don't change? So, is life about changing people? You know, some people think that Life is about changing people. It's just always changing people who have problems. Therefore, uh, they just change. They try to change anyone they come across. They try to change the people. So what? how does it affect you when you just try to change people? And uh, so do you think it's a good way of life? Now, you want to change people. What are some better ways? Now, some actually some better ways to change. To change people is by loving them more, caring for them more, and responding to them more. And if the relationship is better, uh, actually already that's changing the person. Already the person has more motivation to be kind to us. And then uh, if uh, there's something we want to change, we have to ask God, okay, uh, help the person to change what is the best way. So we, um, you know, we might, for some people, it might be, you know, being kind to them. That's all we can do because some people just don't want to change. For some people, we can discuss with them. Uh, so do you think uh, we can work on our way of communication? How can we? relate to each other better? How can we talk better? Um, to ask questions or to say, actually sometimes apology is a good way to change the other person. I'm sorry, I, I'm frustrated with you sometimes, I'm sorry about that. And then the person might also feel, yes, uh, I yell at you also, I've got frustrated with you also, that I need to change that. So apology is one way and discussing with the person. But if the person is not willing to discuss, then we sometimes have to let go. We cannot change everyone. Some people will just accept. So we let them analyze the situation. You try to change your husband. Now, has he changed? Has he changed? Well, he has changed in some ways, but not enough. So do you want to change him until he's like you? Sometimes people just want to change the spouse so that they are completely like themselves, like them, like, you know, so it, 
it doesn't work because he's that person. He's a different person. So um, it's wisdom how to accept their person and how to change the person with love. So to analyze, for instance, the way you talk. So the way, usually we can ask, how does he talk with you? And then when he talks like that, how does it make you feel? And then we feel unhappy, how did you respond? So you might say, well, so I have frustration too. So if you have frustration, so how does it affect the relationship? So how can, how can you, you know, uh, respond in a different way? But he said, it's unfair. He is angry, how can I be so nice to him? So here he has a misconcept. He's not nice to me, therefore I have to be angry with him. So that's a wrong concept. So we ask him, so if he's you know, not nice to you, then does it mean that then you'll continue to yell at him? So is that the good way? So we, we guide them to, to analyze, is that a good way to relate? So, so we guide him to in, analyze the, the relationship, the situation. And um, are there good days in your relationship? Are there times that you relate to each other more, or better? That what happened there? And do you have times that you laugh with each other? That you enjoy th things together? So find out why. Or ask at the beginning of the relationship where you first dated, how was the relationship? Uh, and then uh, at what point did the relationship get worse? What happened? And did you work on maintaining the relationship and building up the relationship and making it better? So all these questions will help the person to analyze the situation and the problem, the source problem. Now the source problem in a marriage could be uh, that they just demand from each other and this demand make the other person frustrated and the way they communicate is is bad therefore it affects the relationship but behind it there could be the life is full of frustration and behind that maybe they just don't like the spouse because the way they relate or behind that is they just don't like anyone they just don't like they they cannot relate to anyone. So we try to find out the, the root problem, how to fix it if he doesn't like anyone, he doesn't like his spouse, so what can we do? Now, if a person doesn't like his spouse, does it mean that marriage is hopeless? No. He can work on thinking about the good things of the spouse and, and also, uh, you know, if he wants to have a good marriage, then he will obey God and say, I love each other. We submit to one another, be kind to one another, and talk with one another and communicate and listen. So when he builds up the relationship, then the relationship become more enjoyable. And then he can, then the relationship will become better. So even if the root problem now is that he cannot like anybody, anybody. He, he doesn't have any enjoyable relationship with anyone. So he uh, is something that needs to be changed. If a person doesn't, just doesn't like people, that need to be counseled first, help first, before he can build up the marriage. If he doesn't like anyone, he hates the world, he hates people, he doesn't like to communicate, actually, if they are about to marry, to get married and they ask me to counsel them, I will say, uh, we need to work on this before you are suitable to get married. But many people, before they get married, they want to get married. They want to enter marriage. But after they enter marriage and then they find that it's suffering. People think that marriage 
would solve the personal problem, would solve the loneliness, would solve the uh, emotional problem. Marriage doesn't solve problems. Marriage is a place that we need to work on a problem so the marriage will work. If a person doesn't work on them himself, he would not have good marriage. So that's the mis misconception of many people. Even many Christians, they didn't realize that they need to build up their life before they can build up the marriage to have a good marriage. So we guide them to analyze the situation and the problem and help him to manage his thinking and emotions. So his thinking may be, oh, I want to give up. I want to have a divorce. Uh, I, I don't like him. Uh, I don't like his way of talking. I think the best way is to yell at him. So th this is a wrong thinking. The best way is to yell at him. I, do, to, I, I want to make him feel frustrated because he frustrates me. And also manage the emotions. How to have peace from God. How to have that come close to God and have peace. And so that we have take care of our frustration and anger and uh, depression. If a person cannot manage his thinking and emotions, then he will have problem in every area of his life. So that's something that needs to be taken care of. Some people just keep believing that God doesn't love them, nobody loves them, and they are useless. Uh, and then they feel unhappy, they feel hurt. It's all wrong thinking, all problematic thinking and emotions. Okay, number five, imagine the best scenario if they change. So that's something that can help them. Okay, so they uh, help him to manage his thinking and emotions. And then imagine if one day you are uh, happy with yourself and you are making friends, your marriage is healthy and you are serving God happily, how would that be? How would that be in your inside? How is your inner life? You'll be happy. You'll have strength from God. you enjoy people. You know how to relate to people. Can you imagine that situation? Do you want to be like that? To enter the best scenario. And then six, guide him to have the motivation to change. So do you want to change? You can change. Everybody can change, but it's hard to change. Sometimes it's painful to change, but it's possible to change. And you don't have to change everything immediately. It takes time to change one by one. Change the thinking first. Change our emotions. That takes time. Change the emotions takes time. Every day, have good thinking, healthy thinking. I'm, God loves me. I'm, I'm important. God cares about me and I care about people. And there are people who care about me. And my life has purpose. So this healthy way of thinking and I and the more uh, the, uh, the the more love I have for people the more my life will be blessed so um, so you know if the person understand that yeah when we build up the you know build up the correct thinking biblical thinking and uh, good emotions then you know it's better for your life, right? So do you want to change? Do you want to improve a little bit? So he might first change his thinking and then pray to God more and change his emotions and then how to relate to people, how to build up his life. So step by step to build up his life and to how to uh, cure the problematic marriage. And then seven, guide him to think of ways to work on the problem. So how, how can he work on the problem? So he do think of okay so how can you change your own thinking how can you change your emotions how can you change the way you think of people how can you um, relate to people better how can you listen to people more so that's those are things that he need to work on one by one okay now today is already time I'll stop here and next week we'll continue I'm not next week it's next month will continue and uh, if you have any question you can send to me immediately and I will respond to you 
right away. If you have questions, you send only to the leader group and I'll respond to you. Okay, we'll have a prayer for us. If you think of the question, you can send it now, okay? Do you have any Father of Appreciation? Thank you. Because you have a plan to heal our whole person. That we been, can be healed from our hurts in the past. That we been, can be healed of all uh, worldly thinking, wrong ways of thinking, unhealthy ways of thinking that can affect our life. And also we can build up our uh, emotions in a healthy way so that we'll have more peace and joy and confidence. And also we can work on our relationship with people so that we'll relate to people better. Lord, please be with us. Give us guidance. Give us strength. Give us wisdom. Oh Lord Jesus, we need your wisdom. We need your healing. Please bring healing to us so that we can bring healing to other people. Oh Lord Jesus, be with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please comfort our heart. Bring healing to our life. Thank you, Jesus. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful, God. Hallelujah. We trust in you. We rely on you. You can bring healing to our life step by step, to the whole life, so that we become a happy person, a joyful person, a confident person, a caring person, and a person who has a close relationship with you. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please heal our life. Mm -hmm.